Sometime around 3 a.m. this morning, a team of individuals sawed a hole in the north end of MoMA's roof, repelled down with ropes, and stole a nude Marina Abramovich as she was whipping herself with a flaming rose. The thieves and Ms. Abramovich whereabouts are currently unknown. That's NYPD spokesperson James O'Neill detailing how performance art thieves stole prized performance artist Marina Abramovich from the top floor of the Museum of Modern Art. More on that shocking news, plus more stories that barely skim the surface of what's going on in the world today on the top. Topical. From the Onion and Onion Public Radio, I'm Leslie Price. Stay with us. The Topical is presented by Cash App, the number one finance app in the App Store and the easiest way to send and receive money. I love Cash App. It makes paying my child support easy, it only takes a few seconds, and I don't even have to meet up and look them in the face. Download Cash App today and get $10 when you sign up using promo code TOPICAL. Theft of performance artist Marina Abramovich by performance art thieves is rocking the modern art world today. Here with more is OPR art correspondent Remy Berglund. What can you tell us, Remy? Thanks, Leslie. At approximately 3 a.m. this morning, all closed circuit televisions inside the museum were turned off for 20 minutes. At that time, police say a team of individuals disabled the alarm system and grabbed Marina Abramovich undetected as she was screaming, mother, whore, milk, at a burning rose she was flogging herself with. It wasn't until several hours later that museum personnel noticed she was missing. Well, why did it take so long? Doesn't MoMA have 24-7 security? They do, but police say that the burglars replaced Abramovich with a near-identical 72-year-old naked Serbian woman, who they paid to lash herself with a burning rose until someone caught on. No one knew Abramovich had been replaced with a knockoff until a perceptive museum goer noticed that the woman didn't soil herself at 11 a.m., which Abramovich did every day at that hour to illustrate the foibles of routine. This is a prized performance artist for MoMA. They must be reeling right now. Last year, Sotheby's valued her at $1.2 million. I spoke with a shaken Glenn Lowry, who's the art director at MoMA, about what Abramovich's disappearance means for the performance art world. This is a terrible loss. Abramovich may have been valued in the millions, but the truth is she's priceless. People came from all over the world just to get a glimpse of her burning herself with roses or masturbating underneath the floorboards while reciting a recipe for the perfect French omelette. If she can't be recovered, the loss is catastrophic. Any guesses to where Abramovich and her flaming rose are now? It's anyone's guess at this point. Police say that if she's not found quickly, she could likely end up on the black market, selling for perhaps triple her value. If that's the case, she could become part of a private collection or hidden away in a Swiss bank vault for years. This has to rate as one of the most audacious smash-and-grab performance art burglaries ever committed. Absolutely. The most notable performance art heists occurred in 1974, when Chris Burden was stolen. Burden had crucified himself to the roof of a Volkswagen Beetle in a piece titled Transfixed. Thieves simply hotwired the car and drove off with Burton, who wasn't seen again until he turned up in a Canadian tech millionaire's garage in 2008. Well, hopefully Abramovich will be found safely before she disappears completely or ends up in some rummage sale for a tenth of her value. Thank you, Remy. Thank you. Hey there, Topical listeners. I want to tell you about a new way to get horny on the World Wide Web. It's called Blue Chew. Now, you might be asking yourself, me? Get an erection? On the internet? I don't believe it. Well, believe it, softy, because at BlueChew.com, you can get the first sexual performance-enhancing chewables with the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. It takes the blood from the parts of your body that can't get aroused and blasts it right into your penis so you can chew it and do it. And when I say do it, I mean masturbate alone quietly. Or if you're really lucky, have sex. With a person. Pretty cool, right? And I've got a deal so good it'll blow your mind and your wad. Visit BlueChew.com and get the first order free when you use promo code TOPICAL. Just pay $5 shipping and you'll have so much blood coursing through your penis veins you won't know what to do with it all. That's Blue, B-L-U-E, Chew.com, promo code TOPICAL. As the climate crisis worsens, the world's glaciers are melting at ever more alarming rates. At McMurdo Research Station in Antarctica, NASA scientists are using cutting-edge technology to precisely measure the rate of glacial melt in order to inform policymakers as well as the world at large about the exact nature of the danger we face. We sent OPR's environmental reporter Kenneth Neely to see them at work. Thanks for joining us, Kenneth. Thanks for having me, Leslie. So tell me, what was it like being right there on the front lines of the fight for our planet? 
It was definitely interesting, seeing how they conduct research in such an extreme climate. I spoke with Linda Chang, one of the head researchers on the project, and she told me about the technology they use to map the glacier. Hmm. Take a listen. So here is the takeoff oh, trip where we launched- Fuck, it's cold. Oh, I'm freezing my goddamn nuts off. Uh, where we launch what are called airborne radar missions, which use a special PC oh, aircraft tube. Oh shit, I can't feel my face or my legs. Oh God, it feels like my organs are shutting down. Um, as I was saying, we use a special P-3 aircraft to map the glacial topography of Fuck the- Fuck this! I'm going back inside! Hey! Hey! Oh. Where are you going? I thought we were doing an interview- Uh, that's all you managed to get from her? I thought I got a decent amount. That was barely anything. Well, sorry, it was really cold. And I, uh, well, I... I forgot to pack any winter clothes. You forgot to pack winter clothes on a trip to Antarctica? What? Why is that so shocking? People forget things sometimes. That's like the one thing you should make a point of bringing to Antarctica. Okay, well, I was only going for a couple short interviews, and I assumed we'd be inside the research station most of the time anyways. Well, what were you wearing? Uh, ooh, uh, I brought some slacks, a button-up, a baseball cap. To Antarctica? It's like zero degrees there. Actually, it was minus 20. See, I thought because it was getting warmer here, it would be warm there, but it turns out when it's warm here, it's actually way colder over there. Yeah, no shit. It's at the end of the earth. God, do you know how much it cost to send you there? All the permits we had to get approved and you didn't even bring a jacket? Well, I did bring a hoodie. Jesus Christ, even dumb animals know when to cover up. Why didn't you just borrow some clothes from someone? <laughs> oh, I tried. And let's just say the people there weren't really into that idea. Take a listen. Sorry, I don't really like loaning people my stuff. Yeah, sorry. I don't really have any extra clothes. Besides, I don't even know you. Jesus, all right. Well, is there anything else you can tell us about what was going on down there? Well, they definitely have glaciers, and they're definitely melting, and the NASA guys are studying it. Fucking hell. I don't know how exactly, but I know they are. Beyond that, well, uh, it's anyone's guess. God! I need to see you in my office, and uh, don't forget to bring your resignation letter, okay? What?! This was all Riley's fault! She's the travel coordinator! Hey, fuck you, Kenneth. Don't blame me! All right, that's all we've got for today, folks. Kenneth, I think you owe everyone listening an apology before we go. Say you're sorry. <sighs> sorry. Like you mean it! Fine! Sorry. All right, thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. You're such a fucking idiot! Ow! Oh.